Hello, my name is Eric Wright. I am a PhD graduate from the University of Delaware, and today I'm going to be talking about a project that I've worked on of implementing warp level parallelism into LLVM's OpenMP GPU runtime. So the goals of this project is to give the programmer explicit control over the warp level of parallelism found on GPU architectures. And we're doing this by implementing uh, a directive in OpenMP called the SIMD directive. This is a directive that wasn't previously supported within LLVM, but many other similar um, programming models have a comparable concept. And we're going to be designing two different execution models for our implementation that I'm going to kind of go over, namely one being a CPU-centric model and one being a GPU-centric model. So the outline of this talk is that firstly, I'm going to give a, an overview of how LLVM OpenMP handles GPU execution. Then I'm going to talk about how we do code generation for OpenMP within LLVM. And lastly, I'm going to talk about what I'm actually changing to uh, introduce this new level of parallelism. So starting off with the execution model. So when we talk about how th GPU threads have mapped to the actual hardware, we're always thinking of them in terms of warps or for AMD GPUs in terms of wavefronts. So in an NVIDIA warp, it's a group of 32 threads that execute together on the processor at the same time. And then we'll take separate warps from that thread block and they'll effectively take turns on the processor. So we have this kind of inherent level where we're doing 32 threads uh, at any given time. So we have that level of parallelism, which I'm calling the warp level of parallelism. And OpenMP has concepts for mapping the different uh, threads within a thread block to OpenMP concepts. So each thread block here would be one uh, would be OpenMP teams. Threads within the same thread block uh, are marked as parallel, and then threads within the same warp in this case uh, would be SIMD. So we kind of have this breakdown of how we're mapping GPU threads into OpenMP concepts. Now, when we talk about the OpenMP execution model, and we're thinking about it from the, the viewpoint of a CPU, really what we're doing is we're alternating between sequential and parallel regions of code. And we can do that back and forth between sequential and parallel as many times as we want. And anytime a parallel region is uh, encountered, additional worker threads will be uh, spawned. They'll help execute the parallel region. And then those threads will be destroyed at the end of the region. This is very different from how a GPU execution would typically work, where we want to have the number of threads known at the beginning of computation. And we can't really in the middle of computation, spawn and destroy threads like that. And it's clear to see uh, where this problem will really manifest by looking at a fairly simple OpenMP GPU code. So on the left side here, I have a GPU code. And at the very start of this target team's region, we should only have one thread per thread block active, like the main thread for each OpenMP team. And that one thread will call into this sum function here, this, this function here, which will return some sort of floating point output. And then depending on that output, all the threads will have to branch into one of two possible OpenMP parallel regions. So when we actually encounter this parallel, that's when the other threads in the thread block will actually become active and start doing computation. If we think about from you know the viewpoint of a programmer, how we would implement this, let's say in CUDA, this case is actually not very difficult. We could put that val that's returned into shared memory so that all the threads in the thread block can access it. We can guard that call to some function behind an if check to make sure it's the thread ID zero, so only a single thread will be encountering this function. And we synchronize afterwards to make sure that all the threads are on the same page and we'll read the correct value of val before determining the branch. So this is a pretty simple solution in CUDA. Obviously, if we have nested if else's or if we have you know more nesting inside of different functions, it could become much more complicated. But at least in this simple case, from, from the viewpoint of a programmer, we can figure it out. The problem isn't so much that the solution is difficult, because like I said, the solution is easy, 
but in the viewpoint of a compiler, having to have the compiler front end, and let's say Clang, for example, having Clang have to generate all this extra code, all this extra logic, makes it so that anytime we'd want to have LLVM OpenMP on a different front end, we'd have to recreate a lot of code generation, which is very much not what LLVM is designed to do. So instead, LLVM uses what is called the generic execution model. I'll sometimes refer to it as the CPU-centric execution model. And what that means is that it is effectively the GPU mimicking how the CPU will execute with that spawning and destroying threads, as, as I had shown earlier. So the main crux of this is that all the threads on the thread block enter into this target init function within the runtime where they will diverge. We have the one thread, which is the main thread for the team, will go and begin executing user code. All other threads will take this branching path and go into a state machine. And when they hit the state machine, they will immediately become idle. They'll go into an idle state. So back to the main thread, the main thread is executing user code. And anytime it encounters a parallel directive or a parallel region, it will assign that parallel workload. It will synchronize to signal to those other threads that there's something in the workload to compute. Those worker threads will then grab what that workload is execute it, synchronize again to let the main thread know that they're done, and then they would return back to being idle. So effectively, instead of spawning and destroying threads whenever a parallel region is encountered, what we're instead doing is having the, the worker threads go to sleep at the start of the region, and they're being awoken whenever there's a parallel region and put back to sleep at the end of it. So this is the uh, generic execution model. Now, there will be a subset of codes, a subset of OpenMP codes, where we do not have to go through all of this. And for, in, for those specific scenarios, we can use an optimized model called the SPMD model. Um, I will also sometimes refer to this as the GPU-centric model. This is just meaning that this is going to be running much more uh, naturally of, of how a GPU execution typically works. And effectively, this model uh, is working under the assumption that it is safe, that the code in question is safe to execute by all threads within the thread block without producing any side effects or any errors. So for example, whether you're the main thread or any of the worker threads, both of them will just simply execute the user code in full, and then they would uh, exit the region together. Now, the simplest case where we can use that SPMD model, uh, which again is the model where it's safe, inherently safe for all threads to execute, the simplest case is when all of the OpenMP regions are tightly nested. However, as I kind of showed earlier, we can make a code safe uh, to execute an SPMD if we introduce some things like thread guarding and, and variable broadcasting and things like that, as I had showed earlier in that, in that CUDA code. So there is a, an optimization pass within LLVM that um, will take what is a classified as a generic uh, GPU code and will introduce that thread guarding and introduce the synchronization needed to enable SPMD execution instead. That is a, an optimization pass. So instead of doing it in the front end of the compiler, instead we're doing it later as an optimization. So moving on from the execution of OpenMP codes, I want to move on to the code generation of OpenMP codes, so actually generating LLVM IR. So historically, the OpenMP code generation has been done through the Clang front end, which makes it very difficult to imp then implement those changes into different front ends. A more modern approach is to use a new tool called the OpenMP IR Builder. And this is a tool that provides, uh, like, that provides um, front end independent code generation.
And the main crux of this is that we're more heavily relying on the OpenMP runtime and less on the code generation. So anytime we have a uh, OpenMP region of code, so like a parallel region of code, we can identify, we can define that as a parallel task, and then we can pass that task into the runtime directly, and then the runtime will handle things such as thread scheduling and synchronization and things like that. Let me give you an example. Um, so this example is looking at a, an OpenMP loop. In this case, I have a loop marked as OpenMP SIMD, um, which is the directive that I'm going to be talking about for the later half of this of this talk. And we have a very simple for loop with a uh, just a printf statement in the body. And we can divide this loop into a couple of different pieces. So the loop body, which we can kind of define as the parallel task, is probably the most important piece of this to focus on. But also for this loop, we have a loop variable, in this case, this integer i. And we have a trip count or an iteration count, which is, in this case, n minus 1 iterations. And we can then use these individual pieces to effectively uh, rely on the runtime for most of the heavy lifting. Right, so we're going to reorganize these pieces into an automatically generated function. This is a process called outlining. So we have this, this generate function, this outline function. You can see this printf right here. That is the body of that previous loop. This is effectively our parallel task. And then because this is a loop, we have a little bit of extra things such as determining the, um, that loop variable i. And by reorganizing the pieces uh, through outlining, what we can then do is we can pass a pointer to this outline function directly into LLVM's runtime. And then the runtime itself is going to handle thread scheduling and it's going to handle synchronization and things like that. So this is a very um, code generation light approach to doing OpenMP. And any front end could very easily adapt to this. Uh, essentially, they just have to um, be able to generate code for the uh, the body. And then the OpenMP IRR builder handles the rest of the generation, this outlining process and things like that, handles the rest for the actual OpenMP uh, implementation. So lastly, um, I'm going to talk about the actual changes that uh, that this project makes to LLVM. We're going to be implementing the SIMD directive to give the programmer control over that warp level of parallelism on the GPU. So SIMD, it's an acronym that stands for Single Instruction Multiple Data. OpenMP defines the SIMD directive uh, as being applied to a loop to indicate that that loop could then use SIMD instructions. Um, for GPUs, GPUs are, are inherently SIMD-based architectures. So really, when we're looking at a GPU, this just means that adjacent threads within a warp or wavefront um, should be executing the iterations of the SIMD loop. This is the diagram that I had shown earlier, showing how we're mapping uh, a GPU thread block into the OpenMP concepts. So we're going to be classifying threads into three different classifications. One thread for every thread block is our main thread for the team. That is the same as before. A certain number of threads per each warp. In this case, I have one thread per warp. Will be classified as the SIMD leader. This is in charge of, this, the SIMD leader is effectively in charge of Run, executing parallel regions and communicating with um, the SIMD workers. And then every other thread would then be a SIMD worker. Okay, so the main the main thing to kind of keep in mind, the team main thread will execute OpenMP teams code. The SIMD leader will execute OpenMP parallel code. And the SIMD worker will execute OpenMP SIMD code. So. Going off of that execution model I had shown earlier, um, when we we're just talking about uh, working with teams in parallel, we're adding on an additional level to it to accommodate SIMD.
So on the left side of the diagram, everything is the same as I had shown before for that generic execution model, where we have um, all the threads enter into the target initialization and then they're branching into two different paths, depending on if they're a team main or a worker. But now we're including a second divergence point so once a parallel region is encountered, this fetch parallel workload section right here, we have an additional branch. If you're a T, if you're a uh, SIMD leader, you will continue and execute that parallel region normally. If you are a SIMD worker, you will go into a new state machine where you become idle again. While the SIMD leaders are executing that parallel workload, they can encounter any number of SIMD loops. Whenever they encounter a SIMD loop, they assign the SIMD workload. They signal to their workers through a warp level synchronization that there is a SIMD loop uh, to be executed. Those workers will then fetch that workload. And then the leader and the worker will execute that SIMD loop together. And when they're done, they synchronize again. The workers will go back up. They'll go back to being idle, back to sleep. And the SIMD leader will continue executing the parallel region until it finishes. And just like before, um, with the uh, optimized SPMD execution model, we have a separate SPMD model for the SIMD as well which effectively uh, just means that when we get to the step where we fetch the parallel workload, if that parallel region is, uh, is determined to be SPMD safe, so safe to execute by all threads, instead of branching here, um, all threads, the SIMD leaders and the SIMD workers will just continue and execute the code. So from the viewpoint of a SIMD worker thread, this is effectively the flowchart of how it's making decisions. When it gets the parallel workload, it checks if the region is SPMD or not. If it is, it's safe for the workers to execute it, so that's what they do. And if it's not SPMD, they'll go into the state machine and they'll wait for a SIMD loop to be encountered. So we're introducing uh, an additional level of parallelism. I want to talk about what the performance benefits and the performance costs of these uh, execution models are. The machine that we're using, that, that we're running these on, is the Perlmutter supercomputer. This means that we're, we're going to be running on a singular uh, A1, NVIDIA A100 GPU for these test runs. So for this first, for this first graph, we're looking at three different benchmarks each of which um, have a very clear and obvious benefit from using all three levels of parallelism. So the, uh, the blue bar, this parallel bar, this is the baseline. So this is just using two levels of parallelism. So it's using teams and parallel. And then we're checking what is our speed up over that when we introduce SIMD as well. And across the board for codes that uh, benefit from it, um, we are seeing a very sizable increase. Again, it kind of depends on the code. One thing that's also interesting is that um, we give the option to use a uh, the SIMD length clause, or it's the SIMD len, to specify how many threads or how many lanes should be in each in each SIMD group. Okay, so SIMD32 is using the entire warp, so one group in that warp. SIMD16 is a length of 16, so you can fit two groups in every warp, all the way down to SIMD2, which is a SIMD length of two, which means you can fit 16 groups in a single warp. So we're varying um, effectively how long those or how many SIMD lanes there are. And we're finding that uh, depending on the code, it's very code dependent, that can give very different performance. Typically, what we're seeing is it kind of depends on how many iterations uh, that the loop is. If it's a if it's a very small loop, let's say it's only like four iterations, for example, using a length, SIMD length of 32 means that 28 of those threads aren't actually doing anything. You're only using the first four. So by reducing the SIMD length for a very small loop, you can actually get a, uh, a higher speed up from that.
So these are for codes that have a benefit. I also think it's important to talk about codes that don't have a benefit from this kind of optimization. So if you were to just ap apply SIMD to just any random code, just because, uh, what's that performance look like? And because when we're talking about the generic execution model, we're talking a lot about state machines and synchronizing and, and, and branching and stuff like that. So you expect there to be a performance overhead from doing that, and that is what we see. So in codes that do not benefit from this SIMD optimization, when we're executing them in the generic execution model, uh, we see about a 15% performance slowdown for those kernels. Right, so that's about 15% performance due to all the extra synchronization and things like that. However, and very positively, when we're looking at um, the SPMD configuration, which is much more closely to how a typical GPU execution works, we're actually not really seeing any discernible difference in performance, which is very nice. So in gen the generic execution, where we're kind of expecting overhead, we're seeing about a 15% overhead, but then SPMD, where we don't really expect the overhead, we're actually not seeing any. So that's, that's very positive in that it's aligning with what our expectations are. So to summarize a little bit about everything that I've talked about, these, this project has introduced the SIMD directive into the LVM's uh, GPU runtime, which gives the programmer control over all three levels, all three of those native levels of GPU parallelism. And, and many other programming models that are similar to OpenMP have comparable concepts. And so it's, in a lot of cases, it's bringing OpenMP in line with other programming models. All the changes were done through the OpenMP IR builder, all the code generation stuff, meaning that it is cross compatible fairly easily with different front ends. And in the case where a code really benefits from all three levels, it's actually a very important performance boost for those kernels. And then in cases where there isn't a benefit, you're seeing a performance decrease depending on the execution model that gets used. So the general recommendation would be to not just randomly add it to codes and only use this optimization in codes that actually benefit from it. I want to thank you for listening to my talk. Again, my name is Eric Wright. I have my email up on screen if you'd like to reach out and have any questions or, or anything like that. Um, another great avenue is to reach out to my PhD advisor, Sunita Chandrasekharan. You can actually find us both if you go to our lab's website, crpl.cis.udel.edu.